You can know that the CO2 is working by hearing the sizzling on the skin as well by watching to see if it turns white and then to see if it turns red afterwards. Hi, my name is Dr. Melissa Chang and I'm a board certified dermatologist and I've been practicing aesthetic dermatology for about 15 years and I'm super excited to share with you today the results of a medium depth chemical peel with one of my patients who is already through her recovery so we can take you through day by day what her experience was as well as the results. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. As well, if you have feedback about how I can make it better, leave it in the comments. To get notifications, hit the bell icon. And remember to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest treatments. As an aesthetic dermatologist, one of the things that is really important when I'm evaluating a patient is the quality of their skin. And there are many different things that make the skin age, and they are sun exposure, pollution, genetic traits, smoking, even stress. And so a lot of times patients will come in and they'll feel like their skin doesn't look as fresh as they remember, and they want it to look better. One of the things that I've really been loving is the results of a chemical peel. You've probably heard of chemical peels, and there's several different levels of chemical peel. So your lunchtime peel is more of a superficial peel, and that is something where you go in, you have your peel, and you can go right back to what you're doing and you may have some flaking or some light peeling over the next several days. But if we want more rejuvenation, we have to go deeper into the skin. And so once we get past that first layer of the skin, which is called the epidermis, and we're getting into the dermis, we are getting into a medium depth chemical peel. And because we're going deeper into the skin, it requires a little more recovery. But we also get more rejuvenation. And then there's even a third category of peel, which is called a deep chemical peel. And that goes through that first part of the second layer of the skin, which is called the papillary dermis, into the second part or the deeper part of the second layer of the skin, which is called the reticular dermis. So today we're going to focus on a medium depth chemical peel. Our patient came in and she has been on a journey that's been actually for several years and she's super happy with where she is but she also was hoping for some improvement in her skin quality. Part of it is she's had a history of acne so she has a little bit of larger pores as well she is in her 30s and so she has some of the natural changes that come along with being in your 30s like a little bit of discoloration in the skin. Luckily because she has more oily skin she doesn't have a lot of fine wrinkles but she did want some improvement in her texture. So her concerns were larger pores, texture, and early signs of aging of the skin. A medium depth chemical peel will have two components and the second component is TCA 35% and the reason why we keep it at that 35% instead of increasing it to a higher level is that higher percentages of TCA have more risk of scarring and so of course with an aesthetic procedure we want to always make sure that we reduce the risk because we want to make sure that we have a benefit without resulting in scarring and so in order to make that TCA 35% penetrate more evenly the first step, whether it is an acid or whether it's solid CO2, actually just prepares the skin. And so in our case, we chose solid CO2 for that preparation because it makes the TCA penetrate a little bit deeper. A solid CO2 TCA peel may be very different depending on the situation. With the solid CO2, we are rubbing that cold CO2 on the skin. We can rub longer or shorter, we can rub softer or harder, and all of that gives the person who's doing this procedure precise control over the depth. You can know that the CO2 is working by hearing the sizzling on the skin, but as well by watching to see if it turns white and then to see if it turns red afterwards. The TCA portion of the peel, we have really good indicators of where we are with our peel. The deeper we get, the whiter the frost is. Once we are at, we call it a type 3 frost, but once we are at a solid white frost, that means that we are through the bottom of that second layer of the skin, which is again the papillary dermis. The reason why the skin turns white with the TCA peel is because your skin is made of proteins and the proteins are actually denaturing, which is just a fancy way of saying that the proteins are in a certain configuration and they'll lose their configuration and that results in cell death. That white frost from the proteins denaturing will last about 15 minutes 
that's the amount of time that we're looking for give or take a few minutes and then the skin will almost appear like it's gone back to normal even though it may be a little pink but it's not going to be white anymore and over the next several days there is this evolution that happens and it's pretty predictable by day three the epidermis which is that top layer of the skin has died so that's called epidermal necrosis and in addition wound healing is starting to happen so there's inflammation because inflammation is part of wound healing as well there is edema which just means more water is going into the dermis once we hit day seven the epidermis has regenerated so that old epidermis which died has been completely replaced which is this amazing thing about the skin it regenerates itself and then by day 30 we start having what we're really looking for when we're looking for rejuvenation which is collagen production and that actually even continues at day 90 there's even more collagen production and you can see if you do a little biopsy of the skin that's been treated you can actually see a nice layer of organized collagen typically what happens in aged and sun damaged skin is we we see that the collagen is disorganized and fragmented so that has been replaced by organized collagen i was very happy with angie's results number one she was happy with the results which i think is one of the most important things but number two the freshness and quality of the skin was just completely different and sometimes i think very subtle skin changes the patient can feel they can see but it's hard to capture in photography but in this case we could so that was a wonderful result one really cool thing about this patient is that she took the initiative to film part of her treatment and to post it on her TikTok channel. And it received literally millions of views. I think it was like 7 million views. And I actually really enjoyed watching her go through the process. And she is so articulate about the day by day, as well as why she did the treatment. And a lot of questions were generated. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this YouTube video to share with people um, the information that they may be wanting to know after having watched that video. Typically after a chemical peel, after the skin has completely healed and has gone back to its normal state, so not being sensitive, the patient can restart their tretinoin or their retin-A. In addition, of course, they're going to be protecting themselves from the sun. In Angie's case, because she has more oily skin, she's prone to a condition which is called sebaceous hyperplasia, but that's just a fancy way of saying her oil glands are enlarged. And so it typically looks like little tiny bumps in the skin with a little central depression and a lot of times people think it's acne but it's acne that doesn't go away but truly it's enlarged oil glands so our goal next is to continue to treat those and unfortunately those are deep enough that a chemical peel really doesn't fix those so what we need to do is we need to use a little heat and it's called electrodesiccation and maybe we'll film one of those so that you guys can see it we have also recently done this same medium depth chemical peel with CO2 and TCA 35% on another patient. This patient is younger. She's in her 30s, but she has a different type of skin. She's very fair, so she's more prone to redness and freckling. And the reason why we did it for her is because we wanted to help her with her freckles as well as to rejuvenate the skin because her skin is thinner and it's aging, I would say, a little bit more quickly than our first patient's skin. So I hope you enjoy those results. And what you'll be able to see is the similarities if you see them side by side in terms of that peeling process. Thank you so much for watching this video about medium depth chemical peels. I really enjoyed making it for you. If you have any questions that I haven't answered, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our treatments. Thank you again for joining us and I'll see you again next time.